Good morning. Well, excitement already today. I stopped down here at the house and we've got concrete. The basement and the um, garage are poured. The trucks just left. They, they had light towers here. Like they came early enough in the morning that they needed lights. So uh, it's supposed to be hot today and I think they just wanted to get it done before it gets hot and we got plenty to do. So uh, they're gonna stick around and finish this. We're heading down to the farm. Say good morning, boys. Morning. They're going to head down to uh, the farm and see what we can do. We might have to run to Jonesville and get that part for our tractor. Right. Then look, you show up at the farm and dang, it is not even 8 o'clock yet. And the new backhoe is here. Sweet. Ah, this is exciting. We'll look this over here in a little bit. All right, we are waiting to get our part for that tractor. Um, so I'm waiting for the dealer to call me back to tell me if they have it before we run up there. And uh, Phil's planting beans. He's got a little bit he can do yet before we're waiting for seed. Uh, I've got a truck coming today. It's supposed to be here at 2.30, and we're going to get that. We're going to immediately treat two boxes of, excuse me, of beans, and then we can finish planting later today. So that is good. Uh, Dad's still spraying. He's got more beans to spray up here, and then he's got to get to Berkey yet. I don't know if he's going to go there today um, or not, but Daddy. we're going to spend a little bit of time here checking out the new backhoe. What is it? Yeah. Nice new steps. Yeah. Yep. So this is a Deer 310K, and it's got, I think, 30 something hundred dollars on it. Oh, the stabilizers. And a new bucket. Yep, it's got a bucket. Another stabilizer. Yep. So the front tires for sure, and I think even the back tires are a little bit bigger than what was on our old backhoe, which makes it seem like it sits higher. The part is in, and the boys wanted to stay and play in the sandbox, so uh, Grandma's watching them, and we're gonna run and get it. Got it. The new one's all shiny. Cool. Okay, we are back with our part. Um, I moved these roll pins over. I thought. Yeah, they were stuck in the old one. The new one didn't come with them, so I pulled them out, put them in this one. They keep these springs aligned with the bottom half. So we've got to get it stuck back in there and together, and then we've got to get it up here on the axle. So we we'll have to get the forklift. Got the hub on. Getting it in place. I'm going to put the tire on so we can measure. Alright, well, there's a tire on. Um, I think it's I think it's where it's supposed to be, although we need to snug stuff up and then measure from one tire to the other. You measure to the center of the tires to make sure your spacing is right. It was a little bit difficult to tell if we got this in exactly the right spot or not. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and torque all these bolts on the outer tire and then we'll do some measuring before we torque the uh, inner ring of bolts there. Um, should be close though. 
Well, I did not film very good, my apologies, but we got it back together. And you know what the nice thing about working with Phil on a project is? By the time I get done, all my tools are cleaned up and put away. Everything but the jacks. Sweet. Before we take this tractor out of here, we've got to uh, take this quick coupler off of the three-point hitch. Uh, we hooked the anhydrous bar directly to the draft link, so fortunately it's pretty easy to come off. We just pull this bolt, and then that pin slides out, and then there's one on the other side, um, and then we pull this, this pin here out to disconnect it from that, and that's it. Okay, so I got that three-point hitch off, quick coupler. I cleaned up the cab a little bit. I took a couple of monitors out, that 2020 in the brown box. I don't need those anymore. And uh, got some trash out of there and stuff. Dad is getting ready to go to Berkey to spray. And he needs a bunch of chemicals down there. And so uh, I'm going to go get my Chevy and hook up the gooseneck trailer. And he's gonna load stuff up, and then I think we're gonna have to run chemicals to Berkey this afternoon. I was really not, that was not in the plan, because I wanna get some anhydrous tanks and start putting anhydrous on, but uh, getting the spraying done is more critical right now, so I'm gonna help him. I guess Dad's got what he wants here, and he's got a bunch of stuff in the back of the truck, so we're gonna take it down there and go. I see dust. They must be cutting the concrete already. Do you guys remember like three or four weeks ago when some of the neighbors were planting and I went out and looked at fields and decided it was too wet and that we shouldn't do it and it was killing me to wait when everybody else was out working? Turns out those neighbors are all out replanting now because it was too wet to plant when they planted. And I feel a little better about that decision. Driving to Berkey, I've seen a couple of fields that have some replant spots patched into them, and uh, that's that's no fun. So I'm glad we I'm glad we were patient. All right, well, there's all of Dad's stuff that he needs. The chemicals he can just pump them right off the trailer there. Um, so we store water down here in these tanks, and we got another one inside, and we don't have a great well here, and so we actually have these downspouts and are collecting all the rainwater off of the barn for use with our sprayer and that works really well you'd be amazed at how much water falls on that roof with just a quarter of an inch of rain or something we can pretty much fill those tanks up so um they're full he should have enough to spray what he's got to do down here and we are heading back hopefully there'll be a seed truck there when we get there talk about timing can you see that truck pulling into my seed warehouse yep that's what we were waiting for he's a little early 224 perfect Okay, we got that truck unloaded. I was sweating bullets for a minute because I wasn't finding the beans that I was waiting for coming off that truck. We got 10 boxes in. There is seven of these 3-1 uh, uh, Enlist variety. I got one box of a 3-1 Extend. Those and three of these boxes are not mine, actually. They're for a neighboring dealer. They ship stuff to me because I can treat them. You can't get treated beans from the company right now. Um, so we got all those and then these two boxes and these are the two that we were waiting for. They're a 2.5, 2505. Some of the bigger beans we've had all year. This box is full. Um, I've already got chemicals mixed up. I'm all ready to put these two boxes on the treater and uh, get them coated so that Phil can get them planted. Done. Loaded up. It's the quickest turnaround from truck to treater to planter I've ever had. All right, so now I'm done caught up helping Dad and Phil get stuff moved around. I'm going to go down, and we're going to get that anhydrous bar hooked up, and I'm probably going to go get a tank. Uh, but first, let's check out our floor. Awesome. Done, poured, cut, ready to go. Some pump's working. Sweet. Garage is done. Awesome. So uh, next up is setting the deck, I believe. They've got to get the beams in and then set the eye joist. And Builder was here this morning and I talked to him, asked what it looked like as far as time frame and stuff and whether they were going to be here on Monday. And he said, yeah, no. Um, a couple weeks ago, they were chomping at the bit to get here. But our concrete guys, both the walls and the floor, held us up long enough that I guess they found another job. And it sounds like they're going to be busy all next week on that one. So it doesn't sound like they're going to get here next week either, which is a major bummer because that puts us farther behind schedule. But nothing I can do about it. So we'll, when they get here, they get here.
Well, I'm trying to get this hooked up. The problem is without that quick coupler, you have to be awfully darn precise to get them where you want them. So I'm a little crooked. I'm gonna keep trying or keep adjusting and we'll get it hooked up, but it's gonna take a minute. Whew, I got it. It's quite warm out here. It was, I don't know, in the truck when I was on my way back from Berkey, it says 86 degrees, so. Um, we gotta go fix a spilled water bottle emergency in the shop here, apparently. All right, pulling it out. I'm excited to use this. So if you're new and you haven't seen or followed this project, um, this is a new anhydrous applicator for us. We bought it, we actually bought it back in December. We got it home, I don't know, sometime in March, I think it was. My window is filthy. Goodness. And um, it's a different style of bar than what we've used in the past. We've always had a shank style applicator. This is a high speed disc style applicator. And uh, I'm excited for it. We did run a bar very similar to this briefly last year when our shank bar broke and uh, the deer dealer let us let us run one of theirs. So uh, I'm a little bit familiar with it, but new, uh, new system here for the most part. So I do gotta get an anhydrous tank. I do not have one. So we're just gonna pull this out, unfold everything, run through some valve checks, make sure everything looks like it's gonna work and then we'll go get a tank. Okay, well, all the valves moved. I had to make a couple of little adjustments. Uh, Phil got these really cool uh, on off flags right there that move when the valve turns and opens. Well, the one on that valve and one of the valves up there, uh, they they turned the wrong way and it was trying to turn into the motor and so that wasn't gonna work. We, we gotta adjust something on there, but they're not critical, they're just a nice to have thing. So the other two are okay. Uh, I'm fueling up, I'm gonna get some uh, PPE and go get a tank. And then I was looking at this, check this out. So the guy that we bought this from, he, he, he was taking some notes. <laughs> 6 10 of 20 so almost a full year ago fall 21 corn price was 374 january of 21 you could get 333 a bushel i think i think uh you could sell corn at one point that same corn that we were priced he was pricing at 333 a bushel uh for like 780 it's it's currently around 680 yeah crazy Never would have dreamed we'd have the grain prices that we do. Okay, there's my black gloves that I like for anhydrous. I don't know why black matters, but yeah. And uh, my full face respirator, and I bought some new cartridges. Those are the ones from last year, so we'll open those up and swap them out, and we'll be good to go. Well, we got one, but we ain't getting any more tonight. Uh, barely caught them as they were pulling out the driveway to get this one. It's 4.30, I, I guess they probably close at 4.30, or maybe even four and they were just still there, but I figured in the heart of uh, planting season and everybody being busy, they might be open till at least five or six, maybe, but that's all right. One tank, if we get one runoff tonight, I'd be pretty happy. We can do, oh gosh, I think about 30 acres on a tank. It's a big tank, so that's, that's enough for the first day. All right, we're getting hooked up here. The wind is blowing hard that way. The boys are that way, so we're gonna hook it up here. I don't think I'll leak any, but we're just, we'll just hook it up here. And uh, so that's why, yeah, this stuff. Well, there was a bleeder valve open, which is why I wear the mask and watch the wind. But no big deal, we got that closed. We're all hooked up. System is pressurized, at least up to our on main on off valve. So we're going to go to this field right out here behind the barns, uh, which is that first plant of corn we had that the stuff that got snowed on. And uh, we'll, we'll see if we can't a little bit see how it goes well I'm getting my speed fix in here instead of with the planter uh, so I've got some end rows done and I'm just trying to make sure everything's working all right we're doing pretty good it looks like everything's sealing really well except for the two rows that have vapor lines right behind the tires that one and that one that one and sometimes they're not too bad other times they seem to gas off quite a bit but it's the vapor lines so other than that, this is running okay. I do seem to have those vapor lines leaking a lot on the ends that I don't seem to remember with our bar, but it could be just getting everything primed and pressurized and I'm just trying to give it a minute and get everything working. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll do some tinkering and adjusting from there. But as far as the bar, dang, 
This is awesome. You guys, I have some great news to share with you. So if you've been following my channel for a very long time, uh, you will, may remember that uh, on July 4th last year, I have a uh, brother-in-law, Scott, who is uh, in the Michigan National Guard, and he was deployed to the Middle East uh, on July 4th last year. Well, he went to Texas for a couple months and, and then uh, overseas. I just literally, a few seconds ago, got the picture of him back in Michigan with his little boy in the back seat of their car. And uh, I wore this shirt today just for him. I knew he was back in the States and I was really hoping he was getting back to Michigan uh, today or I've been waiting for it all week, honestly. So uh, I'm super happy to have him back. Can't wait to see him. And uh, uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Welcome home, Scott. It's good to have you back. So he, uh, he is the one that is a Chinook pilot, hence the Chinook and uh, uh, did a flyover for us when he was on a training run here a couple of years ago that was uh, pretty cool to see. I'll see. Let me throw a picture in right here. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? They came and flew around our farm uh, the one evening there when we were having a little get together. This was back in 19. So um, anyway, yeah. Welcome home, buddy. All right. Back to what we're doing here. It looks great. It's doing a really good job, but I noticed this one row looks a little bit different. So I'm wondering if we got something stuck on an opener or whatever. It's this one on the end here. So I'm just going to look it over real good here. Well, I don't see anything that would cause that. Uh, looks all right. I wonder if something's tweaked just enough to throw the angle off. You guys remember when we got this and we first brought it in the shop? There was, no, that was the other side. I was gonna say there was one of them gauge wheels that was broken and it was on the end, but it was on the other end. So that's not it. This one here is what we're comparing it to and I just, I don't see anything different that would cause me any type of concern. So we're gonna, we're gonna run it. Okay, well we've got our speed cranked up to nine. Um, this is a new monitor here that I have never used before, but um, well, I haven't really done anything other than turn it on. It seems to be working though, so this is telling me the rates, kind of, relative to one another across the whole bar. You can see one and 17 here are really high. Well, that's because those are half rates. So everything else we want to be pretty even, and those two should be high. Um, but it, it looks looks pretty good, I think. Wow, this is unreal. We are going 10 miles an hour, almost. 9.6, 9.7. We're putting on 220 pounds of anhydrous per acre, side dress. It's sealing and it's holding the rate. That's incredible unbelievable twice as fast as we applied last year with our shank mark wow this is awesome i suppose i should explain the reason that we put a rate and a half on those outside two rows um so we are side dressing anhydrous and what side dressing means is we're putting it beside the crop and we're in 30 inch rows here so we're putting a band of anhydrous ammonia, NH3, uh, which is nitrogen, it's 82% nitrogen, right in between each of those rows. So, because we're driving in the same tracks we did with the planter, um, a 16 row applicator wouldn't work. It would be right on top of the rows and we need to be in between them. So this is a 15 shank applicator. It does not apply in the road between planter passes. And so in order to make sure we get enough nitrogen on those outside rows, we put a rate and a half on. And so that's why we needed that half rate is because it's really supplying a row and a half out there. Make sense? It, it does seem a little bit confusing. The other way to do it would be to have a 17 shank applicator and put a half rate on that 17th row. And then when you turn around, it would come right back down that same path and put the second half of the rate on. So um, this just brings that in a row instead of putting it out in between there. 
Well, that was fast. Tank's empty. And we didn't get any more. So that's it for tonight. Uh, it is going to be a full-time job for somebody, Brock, to uh, haul in hydro tanks and keep up with this. It's not a bad thing. That's good. We're going to get done side dressing. Hopefully. Quickly. As long as everything goes smoothly like it did here. Um, yeah, we did. What did we do? 24 and a half acres. We're putting on a pretty high rate. This is a good farm, high yield potential, so it's on the higher end. I think we're averaging close to 200 pounds of N across here, so it burns through the tanks a little bit faster than some of our other fields will. But uh, yeah, uh, that was fun. This is going to be a good time. I don't know if we'll get any more done tomorrow or not. Uh, we, we might. We probably could. We might. I don't know. Tomorrow's Saturday. I think they'll be open and we could pull tanks in the morning. I don't know. Well, there's our map. We did, like I said, almost 25. There's 28 out there, so might need more than one more tank. I don't know. We'll see. All right, cool. I got the tank unhooked, so we'll take that one back and get some more. We need to get three or four tanks around here so that we can just go and, yeah. And when Phil gets done planting beans, then he can help me haul tanks and if rocks around and we'll get rolling. Checking out the basement a little bit more. These guys did a good job. Slope stuff into my drains here. There's the floor drain for the furnace. We've got the rough in plumbing for the bathroom. And this one is for a uh, bathroom sink and then another sink on the other side of the wall, bar sink or something like that. So everything's, it looks great. It feels shorter in here, but it looks huge. So we got all our water lines, which I'm guessing that one wasn't quite like that. And this one wasn't quite like that when the plumbers left and the concrete guys wiggled them around, but it's fine, whatever, no big deal. So before I run home, I found a job for the new backhoe. Look at that fancy chrome exhaust. That's nice. We're gonna have to have Brock polish that and make it real shiny, you know? Yeah. Needed a bucket of stone. The uh, concrete trucks are doing a number on my driveway over there, so we're gonna fix it before anybody else drives in it. better now I realize that I planted closer than what I'm gonna harvest over here but you see that row right right there yeah that concrete is on the third row out into the field and I get it they're gonna run over it it's fine I didn't expect them to live but I do not want that giant pile of concrete sitting in my field and this seems like a pretty good chance to try out the new backhoe well pretty hard to film you got two hands for backhoe controls, but I got it. It works. It works well. It's smooth. It takes a little bit of use, getting used to to have your arms way out wide instead of right together in the center here like the old one was, but we'll figure that out. Pretty nice. 2,900 and something hours, so right around 3,000. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a great backhoe for us. So it is a 2,000 and... 14, I'm pretty sure uh, it it does not have DEF. So I think it's got a, a particular filter uh, on the exhaust, but it does not use DEF. So yeah, cool. All right, well, I'm gonna find the boys and we're going home. So thanks for watching today and this week. I'll probably make a video again tomorrow. I think I'll be working enough to do that uh, with a little bit of anhydrous and stuff. But like I said, I might only be working in the morning tomorrow. So. I still want to get to the lake this weekend. I haven't got the boat out yet either, so that needs to be done too. But um, yeah, we'll see. So um, I don't know how long this video is. If it's not too terribly long, I'm going to end it with some planner montage footage from my GoPro. So maybe here you go. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.